Saturday, June 1st, 2019. I am at the Starbucks on Indian Town Road in Jupiter, Florida. I'm going to get some gang stalking caught on camera for you this morning. The time is 9.23 a.m. and I'm about to head south on Indian Town Road towards the library. Be looking for synchronized obstruction of movement, synchronized space crowding, and other gang stalking activity. Let's go. That's our first instance of synchronized space crowding. Just as I'm walking out, there's a car coming that's timed, synchronized, and meant to obstruct my movements. I want to make a comment on my gang stalking in action part 37 video where a gang stalker by the name of Michelle called the Jupiter police on me for allegedly snoozing in the dog park as she put it. And being in the dog park area of Sinquez Park without a dog. One of the officers you'll hear on the video. The female officer asked me if I had identification. I said yes and I gave her my social security card. She asked me what the first number on the card was and I told her a four. Apparently it's a little bit faded, so she couldn't make it out. The next officer, there were three that arrived on the scene, two males and a female. The next officer, Officer C. Smith, then asked me for my social security number and date of birth. He wrote that information down, but as you'll notice on the video, he did not call dispatch and ask them to run my information. I'll have you know that that is a gang stalking tactic that police officers use against people that they think it'd be fun to track. Now, mind you, I could have had warrants for murder in the first degree. I could have had arrest warrants for multiple murder in the first degree. I could have had warrants for mass murder in the first degree. And those officers would have never known it Namely, because Officer Smith did not give my information to dispatch. Now, you have to ask yourself, why would a police officer take a person's name, social security number, and date of birth, write it down, and then leave? Why didn't that officer call dispatch right then and there and ask the people at dispatch to run my information to make sure that I didn't have any outstanding arrest warrants against me. Now I don't. 
But they didn't know that. I could have been the subject of a manhunt. I could have had the U.S. Marshals after me. And those officers would have never known. Now, why would an officer ask me for my information and then not call dispatch and ask them for my background? Because they could do that immediately, tell you right on the spot whether or not I'm in any kind of trouble. They wanted to wait until either they got back to the station so they could run it that way because it's more private. Or he wanted to give my information to a bounty hunter or a private investigator and let them be the ones to tell him whether or not I had warrants or anything of the sort. Now, if I had have had warrants, bounty hunters and private investigators have a more confrontational way of apprehending suspects that have warrants than general police departments. And that's what they were going for. They didn't want to run my information. And this kind of looks like a police car right here. I can't really tell. It's unmarked. But it looks just like a police car. It's got the same kind of... Uh, style to it and the same kind of accessories like the grill and the mirror I saw a laptop on on the uh, inside of the car looks like a police vehicle and as I've said plenty of times police vehicles are a hallmark of gang stalking activity they follow gang stalking activity. They hover around it because they're looking for people to apprehend. Now here's another gang stalking bicyclist that refuses to use the bike lane. As you can see to my left here, there is a bike lane. This guy is refusing to use it. Plus he's going the wrong way. He's going against traffic. Those bicyclists are supposed to ride on the other side of the street in the bike lane. He's not even supposed to be over here. That is a hallmark of gang stalking activity. People breaking little laws to crowd your space. And little ordinances and codes of common courtesy. Trivial stuff. But it's not trivial that they crowd your space and annoy you endlessly. So anyhow, back to the police. He could have taken my information and given it to a bounty hunter or a private investigator or some other private semi-law enforcement entity. So they could run my information and... find me and apprehend me themselves. You see, it's more fun than just giving my information to dispatch and them radioing, radioing him back right there on the spot and saying, okay, this guy here, this social has a, an arrest warrant indexed to it for 
crime X, Y, and Z. And then they'd have to take me to jail right away. Now, I don't have arrest warrants or anything of the sort, but I could have arrest warrants. And that officer never would have known. You see. So, I say that to say that where gang stalking rears its head, it takes away the professionalism of people that are supposed to be professionals. The professional thing for that officer to do would have been to give my information to dispatch right then and there to make sure that I didn't have warrants. Because again, I could be a violent murderous felon with warrants against me for violent murderous felonies and those officers never would have known. I could have gone on a killing spree right after they left. And in the local news that evening, the first question that would have been asked was, why wasn't he arrested that day for the warrants that he had out against him? more synchronized space crowding here and notice how he had to get on the sidewalk again synchronized space crowding that guy just happened to be coming on his bike as I was standing here at the corner of Indian Town and Chase Wood Roads he just happened to be on his bike and just happened to be happened to be coming up on the sidewalk right as I was standing here. That is synchronization. That's obstructive gang stalking behavior and it's devised to annoy the targeted individual. Stuff like that can only happen to you so often before you realize it's a derivation rather than a coincidence. So anyhow, the first question that would have been asked that night on the evening news is how come he wasn't arrested for the outstanding warrants that he had right there on the spot? A mass murder could have been prevented. Well, guess what? The officers didn't check my information on the spot. That's why I wasn't arrested and that's why the mass murder wasn't prevented. You see? Now, do you see how ineffective policing can lead to disasters and tragedies? You see, for whatever reason, those officers did not run my information with dispatch. They just took it and left. That's a gang stalking tactic. That's a gang stalking tactic. Who knows what that officer did with my information? So I wanted to make a comment about that. I thought it was peculiar that, and you'll hear it on the video, when the female officer asked Officer Smith, so is that it, are we good to go? Officer Smith said, yeah, we're good to go. And that was without sending my information to dispatch. If you're a police officer and you ask somebody for their information, you do so for one reason and for one reason only. To run it in a police database to see if that person is in trouble for anything. If they are, then by law, you're obligated to arrest that person. For outstanding warrants. If you're not going to use a person's information to look up whether or not they have warrants, then you don't need to be asking them for their information. One of the officers that you'll hear on the video, one of the officers asked me for ID. I gave her my ID. 
The reason a police officer asks for ID is to check you out to see if you have a warrant. I gave them my, not only did I give them my social, but I gave them my full name and my date of birth. They took that information and did not check it out. They just walked away. That's a gang stalking tactic. Because who knows what they did with my information. They could have given it to gang stalking semi law enforcement agents. Who are tracking me right now. We just don't know. I wanted to comment on that. Because you'll hear in the video them ask me for my not only my my uh, ID, but you'll hear Officer Smith ask me specifically for my social. Now, what are you asking me for my social for, Officer Smith, if you are not looking to check me out? You see. So I wanted to make comments about that. And unfortunately, in South Florida, there are an abundance. And as again, right as I'm coming across, there's a car coming. That's synchronization. There's an abundance of You can't really see it because of the glare of the sun, but there are an abundance of cross crossway lights or walkway lights that just don't work. You have to jaywalk in order to get from one side of the street to the other. That's a gang stalking tactic right there. It's done to discourage pedestrians. And if you're a targeted individual and you're on foot a lot of the time, like I am, you encounter a lot of walkway lights that don't work. That's done specifically to disadvantage you. And it's done to force you to jaywalk. Making you look like a person that disregards the law. That's part of gang stalking is the criminalization of the targeted individual. And as I've said in, pre in previous videos, stop lights, walkway lights, and lights that are operated by public entities can be hacked, just like a computer can be hacked. They can be tampered with, just like a computer can be tampered with. And they often are specifically to disadvantage a targeted individual. And I'm telling you, a lot of gang stalking is carried out by semi-law enforcement agencies, the private sector. It has intelligent, it has national and international intelligence mechanisms to it. It's got national and international military mechanisms to it. It's got national and international federal law enforcement agencies involved. And it's got national and international private security firms. Now, the private security firms are the ones that. And don't let me forget churches. There is a religious element to gang stalking. They, they like to try and. Muscle targeted individuals into going in the church. A lot of gang stalkers that a targeted individual runs into talk about God a lot. God and Jesus in an attempt to try and get the targeted individual to go to church and pay 10% of whatever they get to the church okay there is a follow the money mechanism to gang stalking and that is an important part of gang stalking is following the money 
So I've named intelligence, military, federal law enforcement, private security, and church elements in gang stalking. And it is a collaborative effort that has roots in neo-fascism to try and control the world. And rewrite history to fit their own hateful narratives. Now, the private law enforcement, or what I like to call semi law enforcement, they're not exactly secure, they're not exactly police officers, but they work very closely with police officers. Bounty hunters, private investigators, private security firms, security offices that provide security guards to companies and so forth. These guys have people on the streets doing God knows what. But I know for a fact a lot of what they do is gang stalking. They just systematically harass targets. And how does a person become a target? I've spoken at some length about that in previous videos. A person can become a target by having a messy divorce, being a whistleblower, being a political dissident, being very passionate about a political cause, having an inheritance, or making the wrong enemy. That's how a person becomes a target. I'm gonna go over to Cinquez Park. And see, I have stalkers watching me on Facebook and social media. The first post that I posted on Facebook where I tagged my location I tagged my location as Jupiter almost that very minute I started seeing an uptick in gang stalking activity that's because I have gang stalkers in South Florida the deep south of Florida Miami and Miami Beach in that area also in the Aventura and Hallandale Beach areas that are stalking me. They have gang stalking permissions on me. And they cyber stalk me on all of my social media pages. And they saw on my Facebook page that I was in Jupiter. And they immediately used their resources to stalk me out here. And it's some of the most gross, hateful, and annoying stuff you will ever see. I've talked about sit harassment, instruction like this guy here. He just happens to be crossing as I'm crossing. making it look as if I'm in some kind of a group. They like to synchronize you with people in the open space like this that makes you look like you're in cahoots with them. For example, if they want to make me look like I'm a shady drug dealer, when I'm out and about, they will dispatch drug dealer types or just real drug dealers to walk around me in my general vicinity so that police and anybody who knows those drug dealers will associate me with them because they're in my immediate vicinity. You see, if I wanted to, if I was a principal gang stalker and I wanted to make you, the listener, look like a shady drug dealer. The way I would do that is I'd wait until you were out and about. Maybe you were 
walking, maybe you were riding a bike, maybe you were going shopping or going anywhere. I would dispatch the drug dealers in the area that are involved in gang stalking and tell them to go to your immediate location. Not exactly say anything to you or anything of that sort, but just go to your immediate location. What does that do? What does telling drug dealers to go to a person's immediate location all the time do? It makes you yourself look like a drug dealer. See, a lot of gang stalking is guilt by association. If they want to make you look like something, all they have to do is dispatch gang stalkers that are involved in whatever behavior they want you to look like you participate in and have those people around you at all times. All they have to do is dispatch them. And they will come around you and some of them will actually interact with you casually as if they know you. And anybody that's around that knows the kind of activity they're involved in now associates you with that activity. Even though you don't know those people and you've never seen them a day in your life. As a matter of fact, look at my gang stalking and pictures page on Twitter. The most recent one has a photo with me walking down the street and you'll see a white male with a a flowered tank top on and a hat turned backwards walking next to me and I took two pictures of him as he was walking with me and this guy is a drug dealer and he stopped me as I was walking to the library and he offered me marijuana and the chance to come over to whoever's house and smoke marijuana and I said no but he is apparently well known in the area for being a drug dealer he was dispatched by principal gang stalkers and told to flag me down and walk down the street next to me to make it look like that's the kind of the kind of people that I associate with you see, a lot of gang stalking is slander and defamation of character. And one way they do that is just by talking about you hatefully. And another way they defame your character is by having certain kinds of people around you a lot and even interacting with you so as to make it look like you are one of them. You see, it's hateful, deceitful, and... It's just straight up trickery.